Hello and welcome to this lesson from the GCSE PE portal. Today we're going to be looking at gaseous exchange. And before we get there and look specifically about the alveoli and the capillary and how gases start to move around and you know, allow us to live, we first need to cover a very important term which is partial pressure. Because to fully understand how gases are able to exchange, we need to understand almost the chemistry behind what makes them move around. So partial pressure, the way, the way I to sort of describe this and explain this to students is think about squash, orange squash, ribena, any sort of mixer. If you want a strong drink, then you have to put more of the concentrate in and then top up the water. And if you want a weak one, then you put in less concentrate and more water. So we've got two vessels of the same size. The first one, we put in a lot of concentrate. And the second one, we put in hardly any. Okay. We then top the rest up with water, and we've got two, two cups of squash, but they've both got different concentrations in. The first one has got so much more, a larger percentage of that glass of squash is made up from concentrate. Whereas the one on the right, we've got hardly any of that drink made up of the concentrate. So we've got less red, but more blue, even though the two glasses are the same size and have the same amount of fluid in. The same principle, or the principle works, I should say, with partial pressure. Let's say we've got now a box with five pieces of oxygen inside of it, okay, or oxygen molecules. So the rest of it's filled up with nitrogen and carbon dioxide and you know, other earthly gases. But we've got five pieces of oxygen inside it. In the same size box next to it, let's say we've only got three molecules of oxygen inside there. The rest of the space is still filled up. It's just filled up with different stuff. The way we refer this to partial pressure is that we say this box here or this area has a lower, which put an arrow, PP, a lower partial pressure of oxygen compared to the one on the left, which has a higher partial pressure of oxygen. Okay, so partial pressure refers to the concentration or the percentage of a mixture, sorry, what percentage of a mixture is made up of the gas inside it. So when we look at you know, the environment, when we look at the air that comes into the alveoli, it's got a high partial pressure of oxygen compared to the blood, which has a low partial pressure of oxygen. And it's low because we've used it around the body. So when the blood comes back up to the lungs and it's there to collect oxygen, we've already dropped off some of the oxygen. So we're, we're, we're low on numbers, we're low on oxygen molecules. So we've now got a difference. We've got an area of high pressure and an area of low pressure. Whenever we talk about partial pressure, there is always a movement from high, I'll just put H, to low, and L. If there's an area of high partial pressure and an area of low partial pressure, the molecules tumble down. They go into the area of lower partial pressure. The same goes for carbon dioxide, because I've only been speaking about oxygen for the time being, but we'll get to that in a moment. Partial pressure then is the concentration of a gas in a mixture. We can have a high partial pressure, we can have a low partial pressure. Quite often we talk about them in relation to another mixture. So the air around us has a higher partial pressure of oxygen compared to the blood that's returning to the lungs after it's been around the rest of the body. That movement of gas has a name, and that name, is if I grab the black pen here and put it down here, is called diffusion. The movement of gas from an area of high pressure to low pressure. Diffusion. And that is how gas exchange is possible at the alveoli inside of our lungs, okay? So if we move over here now and we start to look at gaseous exchange, 
I've already mentioned that the partial pressure of oxygen coming in from the outside air is higher compared to the blood levels of oxygen coming back from around the body. Therefore, we've now got this, this slope or this diffusion gradient. And what we start to see is the oxygen that was in the alveoli, lots of it here, whereas we've got hardly any in the blood, we start to get this movement occurring. We get oxygen jumping out of the alveoli and into the blood that's next to it. That then carries on its journey, and that fresh batch of oxygenated blood can now go to, uh, go to the working muscles and supply them with, uh, with oxygen, so they continue to release energy and contract, and sport performance can carry on. But oxygen isn't the only gas, because you know, gas exchange, you know, exchange suggests that we've got two swapping places, and we do. We've got carbon dioxide. So if I put carbon dioxide here now, if I use the, should I use the black pen, I just put a squiggle like that. So you've got carbon dioxide, which we produce inside of our muscles when we exercise. So when, when they contract and they break food down and they release energy so that we can move and run and you know, hit an object or whatever it might be, carbon dioxide is the byproduct. And when we produce carbon dioxide in our muscles as a byproduct, the blood's on hand to pick it up, to take it back up to the lungs so that we can get rid of it. So we're producing carbon dioxide inside of our muscles. So we've got a high partial pressure of CO2, carbon dioxide, a high partial pressure inside of our blood. The environment here has got a low partial pressure of carbon dioxide. So we've now generated a diffusion gradient. We've got an area of high pressure and an area of low pressure. This is in the blood. This is in the alveoli, therefore the carbon dioxide is going to jump out of the blood, into the alveoli, we then exhale, carbon dioxide leaves our body. But it all comes down to this, partial pressures. If we didn't have these differences of high air or areas of high pressure and low pressure, no exchange would happen. And that is gaseous exchange at the alveoli. I hope that was helpful, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank <laughs> you.